Good evening. Welcome to worship at St. Philip's Episcopal Church on this uh, special, and well, there you go. All right, so we're gonna, it's okay, right? It's, it's all good. Once it starts, it starts, but we're glad you're here to worship uh, on Monday, Thursday. And I'm glad you're here, whether you're physically present or with us online. Now, I just will remind y'all that a part of this worship service, uh, as our Lord Jesus did and washed the feet of His disciples, there will be a foot washing uh, ceremony this evening. It's something that you may participate in. There will be a time when you're invited forward. You are certainly not obligated in any way to do that. If you're uh, with us at home, look, you can do this just as easily where you are. Get some water, get a basin, get some towels, and uh, there in your living room, you can participate uh, in a very real way by washing the feet of the members of your family. Now, this service, just as a reminder, ends in silence and darkness. So there's no dismissal. I assure you it will be quite obvious when the service itself is over. But we invite you to remain, if you wish, here in the room in prayer. If you wish to leave, please do so quietly. And I'll also point out that we have a prayer watch that will be going here at St. Philip's until midnight. So we will have uh, folks here in the church itself. We'll have folks to make sure we're all good and safe. And again, those of you with us online, you can uh, pray that uh, prayer watch. Go to stphilipsfrisco.org and check out Easter and Holy Week. Uh, and I'll also add that there will be a Good Friday service at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. And now, friends, enough of that. I invite you to stand. And as you prepare your hearts and minds to worship the Lord, I invite you to take a moment of silence. In that silence, ask the Lord to prepare you to worship Him. We break our silence praying the prayer that's up on the screens. Join with me. Almighty God, deliver us when we draw near to you from coldness of heart and wanderings of mind that with steadfast thoughts and kindled affections we may worship you in spirit and in truth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Keep your voices ready. We're going to sing the King of Love.
Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose dear Son on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it, thankfully, in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated, and we will now hear the words of Holy Scripture. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall be for you, the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the 10th day of this month, every man shall take a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take according to the number of persons. According to what each can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. In this manner, you shall eat it, with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt both man and beast. And on all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be assigned for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be for you a memorial day and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations as a statute forever you shall keep it as a feast. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you. And when the hour came, Jesus reclined at table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said this, Take this and divide it amongst yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, the cup, after they had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But behold, the hand of him who betrays me is with me on the table. For the Son of Man goes as it has been determined. But woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to question one another which one of them it could be who was going to do this. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord. Goodness, y'all are quiet. Pray with me, please. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come as the wind and cleanse. Come as the fire and burn. Convert and consecrate our hearts for our great good and to your greater glory. For we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Have you ever thought about how many meals... Jesus shared with his disciples. You ever thought about that? I mean, three years together, three years together and all of this ministry they were doing, there was hundreds, hundreds upon hundreds of meals. So whether they were uh, just snacking, you know, from wheat stalks as they were wandering throughout Galilee or they were uh, hanging out with Peter's mother-in-law and digging on her home cooking, Uh, or whether they were just hanging out with tax collectors and sinners and and sharing a meal. It was often, it was often while Jesus and his disciples were having a meal together that he taught them, just like he did, just like he did in the reading we heard from Luke's gospel. But in that reading, it wasn't just some ordinary meal that they were sharing. No, it was the Passover meal. They were sharing the Passover meal, that communal recollection of the time in the past when God delivered his people out of bondage in Egypt. Now, we heard about that from the Exodus reading, or we heard that in the Exodus reading if you didn't know that story, but here's how it goes. On the Hebrews' last night in Egypt, last night is slaves to these Egyptian overlords, God acted. He acted in judgment on the Egyptians and in deliverance of his people, the Hebrews. And he did this by passing through Egypt, claiming the life of the firstborn. The firstborn. The firstborn of Hebrew and the firstborn of Egypt alike. Sparing only those whose homes were marked by the blood of a lamb. An innocent. An innocent whose death stood in the place of of the Hebrew firstborn. And so a remembrance, in remembrance of his judgment and of his deliverance, God instituted for his people the Passover covenant. He did that through his guy, Moses. And the people then were to commemorate that night. They were to commemorate that night of judgment and deliverance by sharing a meal, unleavened bread and a lamb sacrificed by the head of the household. And the tradition of the Passover developed in such a way that uh, the key moment in the evening's meal 
would involve that youngest person present asking the oldest person, what does this meal mean? And the older would reply, it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, for he passed over the houses of the people of Israel in Egypt when he struck down the Egyptians, but spared our houses. So you see, friends, at its very core, the Passover is a memory. It's a memory of God's grace, of God's past deliverance of His chosen people by His power alone and in spite of all their failings and their disobedience. And at the same time, the Passover also looks forward in hope to a time when, in His grace, God will again act to deliver His people through a new Moses from the bondage that remains in their lives. So when Jesus got together with his friends that night in the upper room, they expected, they fully expected that they were going to have another Passover meal, just like the one the year before and the year before that. But this one Passover meal, this one Passover meal, Jesus' last on earth changes everything. You see, instead of recalling what Uh, God did for the Hebrews centuries long past, Jesus recast that meal and what he would do the next day on the cross, once and for all, never to be repeated, always effective. You see, in that last supper, Jesus gave his followers a way of receiving by grace what he would do for them, but not in some uh, theoretical or not in some abstract way, a tangible physical way to share anew His grace. And this meal He gives them, it's not focused on the flesh of a lamb. It's not focused on unleavened bread. It's not based on memories of a past rescue. No, this meal is about Jesus' very own body, broken and given for His followers now and forever in deliverance of their sins past, present, and future. Nor is this a meal involving the blood of an animal sacrificed to establish some covenant which hopefully one day might be fulfilled. No. What's involved in this last Passover meal is Jesus' own blood, His own perfectly innocent blood poured out, which seals that new and perfect covenant eternally, effectively, uh, continuously given. Why do I rehearse all of that? I mean, come on, we're not slaves in Egypt anymore, are we? But listen, we are slaves still to sin nonetheless. In bondage today to our sin, as much as the Hebrews were 3,300 years ago, we still need to be delivered from our sins. We cannot save ourselves. And listen, y'all, the evil around us, we know it needs to be judged and punishment if we are going to have any hope as we face our daily lives. You see, the deliverance and the judgment that we need is what God Himself does on Good Friday on the cross. By taking on Himself the punishment that we deserve for our sins, He satisfied His holiness and then gave us by adoption the gift of His sinless life. Friends, in the Eucharist, We like the Passover meal. We do, in fact, enact what God did in the past. That's true. But unlike that Passover meal, we're not looking forward, wondering when or if God will act again. No, we are giving thanks. That's what the word Eucharist means. It means thanks. We are giving thanks that He acted decisively and perfectly once and for all to redeem His people. That's us from our slavery to sin. And again, unlike the Passover, our Eucharist isn't uh, simply a memory of something that happened long ago. No, our Eucharistic meal is the reality. It's the reality of the presence of Jesus Christ here and now in this place. We take Jesus' body. When we take Jesus' body and blood, we are proclaiming and receiving the result of His death and resurrection, literally consuming the body and blood of Jesus our Lord, pressing with our teeth and receiving on our tongue the grace of Christ. Let 
after our Eucharist this evening, we're going to strip this place. We're going to strip it bare. Everything you see that's adornment will be taken away. And the lights will drop. We're going to make this place barren in anticipation of Jesus' crucifixion. We're going to leave here in darkness and quiet. And at the very same time, friends, leave here filled with hope. Listen, it is only... Only because the darkness of Good Friday and only because of the light of Easter that we are able, like Jesus' disciples, to look back on this night, Monday, Thursday, and see it for what it truly is. See it for what it truly is. The night we give joyful thanksgiving for Jesus filling us with His grace and His body and blood. Amen. Fellow servants of our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night before his death, Jesus set an example for his disciples by washing their feet, an act of humble service. He taught that strength and growth in life of the kingdom of God come not by power, authority, or even miracle, but by such lowly service. We all need to remember his example but none stand more in need of this reminder than those whom the Lord has called to the ordained ministry. Therefore, I invite you, who share in the royal priesthood of Christ, to come forward, that I may recall whose servant I am by following the example of my master. But come remembering his admonition that what will be done for you is also to be done by you to others. For a servant is not greater than his master, nor is one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. The Lord Jesus, after he had supped with his disciples and had washed their feet, said to them, Do you know what I, your Lord and Master, have done to you? I have given you an example that you should do as I have done. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. By this shall the world know that you are my disciples, that you have love for one another. Six youth will now come forward to receive foot washing. If you would like to have your feet washed, 
as you feel called. Leave your shoes in your pews and form around the back two lines this way. An usher will direct you to a station as you come forward. And if you're joining us online, join in the foot washing at home.
please kneel or sit as we pray for the church and the world. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our Bishop George, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed, Pray for those who have died. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. You said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Praying together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And And peace to those joining us online. You may be seated. And now as we prepare to approach the table of the Lord, hear these words of scripture. I appeal to you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. kneel or sit as you are able. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death. And rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in all the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ 
to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with Philip and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. You may be seated. In just a moment, an usher will lead you to the rail for Holy Communion. All baptized Christians are welcome to receive. Instructions can be found on the screens or in your bulletin.
Please stand. Following our post-communion prayer, there will be a procession of the Blessed Sacrament into our narthex. As a reminder, at the conclusion of the stripping of the altar, please leave in silence. And now let us pray together the words of our post-communion prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen.
my God, my God, why have you forsaken me and are so far from my cry and from the words of my distress? Oh, my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. By night as well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our forefathers put their trust in you. They trusted, and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, if he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me out of the womb and kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far away from me, for trouble is near and there is none to help. Many young bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their jaws at me like a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My mouth is dried out like a potsherd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. And you have laid me in the dust of the grave. Packs of dogs close me in, and gangs of evildoers circle around me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. Be not far away, O Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. Save me from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, my wretched body from the horns of wild bulls. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Praise the Lord. You that fear him, stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel. All you of Jacob's line, give glory. For he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty, neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry to him, he hears them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. And those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone, all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me and are so far from my cry and from the words of my distress? Oh, my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. By night as well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our forefathers put their trust in you. They trusted, and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me out of the womb and kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. 
You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far away from me, for trouble is near and there is none to help. Many young bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their jaws at me like a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My mouth is dried out like a potsherd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. And you have laid me in the dust of the grave. Packs of dogs close me in, and gangs of evildoers circle around me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. Be not far away, O Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. Save me from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, my wretched body from the horns of wild bulls. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel. All you of Jacob's line, give glory. For he does not despise nor poor the poor in their poverty, neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry to him, he hears them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord and all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone, all who sleep in the earth bow down and worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me and are so far from my cry and from the words of my distress? Oh, my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. By night as well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel our forefathers put their trust in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me out of the womb and kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near and there is none to help. Many young bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their jaws at me like a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My mouth is dried out like a potsherd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. And you have laid me in the dust of the grave. Packs of dogs close me in, and gangs of evildoers circle around me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. Be not far away, O Lord. 
you are my strength. Hasten to help me. Save me from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, my wretched body from the horns of wild bulls. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel. All you of Jacob's line, give glory. For he does not despise nor pour the poor in their poverty, neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry to him, he hears them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall bow before him, for kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone all who sleep in the earth bow down and worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me and are so far from my cry and from the words of my distress? Oh, my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. By night as well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our forefathers put their trust in you. They trusted, and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me... I am a worm and no man, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he delights in him. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? and are so far from my cry and from the words of my distress. Please be seated. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all fall away because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter answered him, Though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples said the same. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, Let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, 
So, could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, for the second time, he went away and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So, leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words again. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Sleep and take your rest later on. See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. <laughs> 